Hello everyone, we're going to talk about vaccine literacy today. My name is Nakia Bolin and I'm a certified health education specialist. So here's a little bit about me. Um, I am again, my name is Nakia Bolden. I graduated in May 2020 with my Bachelor of Science in Health Sciences with a concentration in health promotion um, from the Indiana University. I did not have any plans of pursuing a public health degree as a undergrad student. I thought I was gonna stop at um, bachelor's degree in health sciences and health promotion with my passion really being health promotion. But I am currently attending the Indiana State University pursuing my master's of public health and I will graduate next year in May, 2023. I became a certified health education specialist in October, 2020. I have worked with the Indiana Department of Health and the CDC Foundation as a communicable disease investigator and a public health investigator analyzing COVID-19 data. I'm currently working with the CDC Foundation as a vaccine demand strategist, supporting a local health department in Michigan. Um, just developing ways to increase vaccine rates, vaccine confidence, vaccine literacy in the community. Um, I, am health, I Am Health Education is dedicated to um, improving health education and providing resources and programs to communities, professionals, and students. So what is vaccine literacy? So vaccine literacy is a process of providing vaccine information building communication and increasing people's engagement about vaccines. Vaccine literacy is the knowledge that you have about vaccines, the process, the benefits, the risks, the side effects. It's like health literacy, but it's just vaccine literacy. And vaccine literacy is important because if someone does not understand vaccine literacy, they're, they're not gonna be likely to get vaccinated because they don't even know what the benefits are or what vaccine really entails. Something that we're dealing with right now with the COVID-19 pandemic is vaccine hesitancy. And in 2019, the World Health Organization listed vaccine hesitancy as a global threat. This is before the pandemic was known in the United States. The vaccine hesitancy and the reluctance or refusal to vaccinate despite the availability of vaccines. Um, this threatens the process of protecting yourself from preventable diseases like COVID-19. Um, vaccine hesitancy was here before COVID-19 was um, a threat, as you can see with the um, 2019 the World Health Organization lessened them as a global threat. Um, and this will prevent people from getting vaccines. And this will cost millions of lives because there's a lot of infectious diseases out there that have vaccines for that people aren't getting vaccinated for and people are dying because of the hesitancy, because of misinformation and disinformation. But this video is really about vaccines. So we're not gonna really get into the misinformation and disinformation. I'm gonna leave that for another video. So there's some brief uh, vaccine history. So the first vaccine was created in 1796 um, by Edward Jenner. And um, it started with the cowpox vaccine and the 13 year old boy. And then in, 19, I mean, and then in 1798, the first smallpox vaccine was developed. Vaccines are one of the greatest success stories in public health. Um, due to the use of vaccines, we have uh, eliminated smallpox and nearly eliminated the wild polio virus. The number of people who experienced the devastating effects of preventable infectious disease like measles and the whooping cough is at an all-time low. To ensure the continued success of vaccines in the United States, it is crucial to make sure that vaccines are safe and effective. There's so many different types of vaccines. There's the inactivated vaccines, the live vaccines, the mRNA vaccines, um, the subunit, uh, recombinant, and polycyphrid vaccines. There's our toxoid vaccines and the viral vector vaccines. 
So inactivated vaccines use a killed version of the germ that causes a disease. Inactivated vaccines usually don't provide immunity protection that's as strong as live vaccines. So you may need several doses over time, also known as boosters, in order to get the ongoing immunity against the disease. This could be um, Hep A, the flu shot, which you get every year to protect you from new variants of the influenza, the polio shot, and rabies. Most times, every time you are um, exposed to the possibility of rabies, you get a rabies shot. Um, the live vaccines use a weakened um, form of the germ that causes a disease. Because these vaccines are so similar to the natural infection that they help prevent, they create a strong and long-lasting immune response. Just one or two doses of most live vaccines can give you a lifetime of protection against a germ and the disease that it causes. You see this in the M MMR vaccines, the measles, mumps, and rubella, the rotavirus vaccine, which my son got today, the smallpox vaccine, the chickenpox vaccine, and the yellow fever vaccine. So the mRNA vaccine, also known as the messenger RNA vaccines, um, have been studied for decades. Um, and this technology was used to make the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, the mRNA vaccines make proteins in order to trigger an immune response. mRNA vaccines have several benefits compared to other types of vaccines. They have shorter manufacturing times, and because I do not contain a live virus, there's no risk of causing the disease in the person getting vaccinated. So the mRNA vaccine of COVID-19 does not contain the virus. It cannot give you COVID-19. Um, those are some misconceptions out there. And it cannot change your DNA. So the Sambunet, the recombinant, um, the, and the polycyrite vaccines um, use pieces of the germ that they that they have. So they give a very strong immune response that's targeted to the key parts of the germ. They can also be used on almost everyone who needs them, including people with weakened immune systems and long-term health problems that cannot get other vaccines. All right, so the toxioid vaccines use a toxin made by the germ that causes a disease. They create immunity to the parts of the germ that causes a disease instead of the whole entire germ. The, me, that means that immune response is targeted to the toxin instead of the whole germ. For decades, scientists have studied the viral vector vaccines. Some vaccines recently used for Ebola outbreaks have used viral vector technology. And a number of studies have focused on viral vector vaccines against other infectious diseases, such as Zika, flu, and HIV. Scientists use this technology to make COVID-19 vaccines as well. In America, that's the Johnson & Johnson, and in other countries, that could be the COVAX. Um, the viral vector vaccines use a modified version of a different virus as a vector to deliver protection. Several different viruses have been used as vectors, including influenza, vascular stomatitis virus, measles virus, and the adenovirus, which causes the common cold. The adenovirus is one of the viral vectors used in some COVID-19 vaccines being studied in clinical trials currently. Viral vector vaccines are used to protect uh, against COVID-19 currently and in other countries, um, different other um, vaccines and Ebola vaccines. All right, so before vaccines are approved by the, um, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, scientists test them extensively to ensure that they are effective and safe. And if the benefits outweigh the risk, they are not approved and clinical trials are ended. And before viruses get approved by the FDA, again, they have to 
undergo clinical trials. Um, so vaccines are the best protection against infectious diseases, but no vaccine is 100% safe or effective for everyone because each person's body reacts to vaccines differently. Um, this includes not on the subject of vaccines, but other um, protection um, devices or technology, condoms and birth control, and even uh, DNA matches. None of these are 100% um, related or, or effective. Condoms are not 100% effective. Um, they're less than 100%. Birth control options are not 100% effective. I think the most effective ones are 99.8 and 99.9. .9. And even DNA tests or to see if this person related to you, that test is not 99 point, I mean, that test is not 100% uh, probable. Like it's always a 99.8 .9 or 99.9 .9 or even less than that, that this person is related to you. So nothing's 100% safe, effective, or factual in that matter. So vaccines undergo phase one, phase two, and phase three of clinical trials before the FDA reviews it, the ACIP reviews it, and it could possibly be approved for uses in the population. So phase one is the safety Phase two is effectiveness. And phase three is going to look at the safety and effectiveness to make sure that this vaccine or product can 100% be effect effective and effective as entrusted for the communities to have the benefits outweigh the risk. So if the benefits do not outweigh the risk, this product is not going to get approved by the FDA. This product is not going to um, be marketed or produced for the communities. Right now in America, there's two vaccines that are approved by the FDA. That's the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is not approved by the FDA. It's under emergency authorization use, which is totally different. Um, once the pandemic ends, if it, if it ends, um, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are the best protection for COVID-19. That's probably gonna be here for the unforeseeable future, just like the influenza. Um, COVID-19 is not gonna go anywhere. So right now we need to learn how to adapt um, with the virus and protect ourselves from getting sick and dying. I mean, in the beginning, you know, before Omicron variant was here, the COVID-19 vaccine protected you um, from getting the COVID-19 virus and from death and hospitalization. But as new variants have emerged, it doesn't provide that protection anymore. Instead, the protection that it provides is to reduce hospitalization, reduce deaths, and reduce transmissibility. That means that the COVID-19 vaccine is not gonna uh, prevent you from getting the virus. It's going to help you not be as sick, um, that your case won't be as severe as someone who has not had the virus. Um, your hospitalization's chances will decrease a chance of dying from COVID-19 will be decreased because of the vaccine. So these are a few graphics that I created as a vaccine demand strategist supporting a local health department in Michigan. I've created targeted messaging surrounding um, vaccines don't limit your freedom. They actually help you live longer lives. Vaccines save millions of lives each year. This is even before the pandemic. There was millions of lives that were saved because of the vaccines protecting you from infectious diseases. Um, some, some history about vaccines, how they were um, created in 1796. Um, some messaging regarding it's not too late to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Even still, it's not too late to get COVID-19 vaccine. Even if you've been sick, the vaccine provides so much protection. Um, it's not good to get your second dose. It's not good to get your booster shot. Um, how, and how COVID-19 vaccines reduces long COVID. And that's currently under research now, but there's evidence that suggests that the COVID-19 vaccine reduces the long COVID and post-COVID conditions. Um, some empowering messages like we are greater than COVID-19 um, and how benefits the booster provides. Um, it's like wearing a seatbelt or a helmet. The extra protection could save your life. 
So those are some few um, vaccine graphics that I have created regarding the social media strategy that I've used to combat the COVID-19 vaccines. I, I mean, to combat the COVID-19 virus. I've also created postcards um, to help those with um, limited access to the internet, um, reminders about the COVID-19 vaccine, um, the benefits, and how that can be just incorporated into routine vaccines that you get with your doctor. Um, so with all of that in mind, a little bit of history about um, the virus, I mean, the vaccine, the benefits, the hesitancy, vaccine literacy, the approval process. I want you to find here why. So the reasons why people choose not to vaccinate are complex. And a vaccine advisory group um, with the World Health Organization identified competency and inconvenience in accessing the vaccines. And lack of confidence are key reasons underlying hesitancy. Health workers, especially those in communities, remain the most trusted advisor and influencer of vaccines in their decision to get vaccinated. And they must be supported to provide trusted and credible information on vaccines. There is so much research that says that um, communities trust their doctor and other healthcare professionals for vaccine information and um trusted vaccine resources compared to uh, health departments and government organizations. So I want you to find your why. Why are you promoting vaccines if you are? Why are you against vaccines if you are? And comment below or send me a message telling me your why. Um, I think the, the most important part is to um, educate those who are hesitant about vaccines and try to understand their why. Try to understand their fears, where they're coming from, um, misconceptions. Try to combat disinformation and misinformation surrounding the COVID-19 vaccine. And just meet them where they're at. Pushing someone to get vaccinated is not gonna make them get vaccinated. Probably gonna make them be more uh, reluctant to get vaccinated. Like, why are you pushing this so much? Just understanding where they're coming from. Understanding if it's access to vaccines, if there's lack of confidence surrounding vaccines, and just give them the education and information and help them make the best decision for them to get vaccinated. Um, and I'm li I've listed my resources. I've always do because I'm not making this stuff up. Um, you can look at these sites and learn more about vaccine literacy, vaccine misinformation, disinformation, and vaccine hesitancy, because it is very important to understand and to have vaccine literacy to make sound decisions regarding your health and the health of your family members in your communities, because vaccines have been saving lives for millions of years. I mean, thousands of years, if not millions of years. Vaccines are important, and you need to understand your why to figure out what is preventing you to get vaccinated? Or what is preventing you from encouraging others to get vaccinated? What are your stories? I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much.